the Renaissance English History Podcast, a member of the Agora Podcast Network. I'm your host, Heather Tesco. Today, I want to do a short supplemental episode telling you about a little known event, one that has just been researched in the new book, Eric and Robert, Elizabeth's Dueling Suitors by Dr. John Stilkington. Many of you will have known the Swedish king, Eric XIV of the House of Vasa, was an early suitor for Elizabeth's hand. Even during the reign of Mary, he was courting her, and Mary had actually been quite supportive, thinking that sending her attractive and popular sister to be the Queen of Sweden would be a good idea. But Elizabeth said she never wanted to marry and managed to stall for time. Once Elizabeth became queen, Eric increased his efforts to woo the queen. At the same time, her favorite, Robert Dudley, was also planning his moves, seeing whether or not he might be able to make a bid for the queen's heart. Wisely keeping his wife Amy away from court, the relationship between Robert and Elizabeth became scandalous, not just in England, but also in courts throughout Europe. Now, Eric heard through the grapevine that his prized queen, on whom he had invested so much energy and time and built up such a romantic fantasy about, was potentially slipping away from him, and he decided to do something drastic. The idea that he wanted to visit Elizabeth isn't new to scholars. There's a famous letter from Elizabeth where she tries to put him off visiting by saying that she doesn't feel the same way about him as he does about her, and that she really hasn't felt that way for anyone yet. But here's where the new research by Dr. Stilkington comes into play. Dr. Stilkington has unearthed letters and papers showing that Eric managed to board a boat, unbeknownst to anyone, pretending to be a ship's hand and making it to England in secret. He landed in Dover in the springtime of 1560 and made his way to London, still pretending to be a commoner. During this time, he kept a journal, which Dr. Stilkington has used extensively in his research. His descriptions of Tudor London are among the most vivid that we have now, putting Stowe's survey to shame in some respects. He openly wrote of his visits to bear baitings, quote, miserable, violent wrenches, but who can blame them poor souls being treated as such savages, he wrote, showing perhaps an early display of empathy for the bears in Southwark. He also wrote of his walks across London Bridge, quote, the rapids move quickly here and one imagines the agony of being pulled under, but then one's eyes are drawn to the severed heads above the gate where Moore and Cromwell had once gazed out through unseeing eyes on the whores of the brothels beyond, and one's thoughts become much more happy indeed, he wrote. So we have Eric wandering around London like a commoner and trying to figure out the best way to make a play for his queen. Now here's the event that no one had ever heard before Dr. Stilkington's research. So apparently one day, Robert and Elizabeth were in the gardens walking. Now, Elizabeth writes in her own papers from the time of a man with a Danish accent approaching them, a gardener of the most common sort, believing himself on the level to speak directly to Robin, she explained. The gardener had the audacity to challenge Robert to a duel, and Robert being hot-headed and a man who had to strut and couldn't allow himself to be shown up by anyone, even a gardener, accepted. So the two pulled their swords. Now the gardener had been hiding one within his tools, and he attempted to duke it out right there. The queen screamed, the guards came running, and the gardener was promptly taken to the tower. The thing is, the queen never wrote the full story, so he had just the snippet of what might have happened. But now, since Dr. Stilkington has found and researched Eric's diary, we know that this man was, in fact, Eric the Fourteenth. After he was thrown ignominiously into the tower, he came clean about who he was. The Swedish dignitaries were called to identify him, and once they confirmed that he was indeed the king, albeit a very smelly one, they released him back into London, and his dignitaries hushed the whole thing up. For it was unseemly for a king to behave in such a way, and if word would have gotten out, it would have been such an embarrassment. For Elizabeth as well, she wouldn't have wanted anyone to know what happened between Robin and Eric. Rumors were already swirling around them, and just a few months later, Robert's wife, Amy would die mysteriously. The less attention, the better. But now that we've uncovered Eric's journal and pieced together the dates, we know that this mysterious duel with the gardener was, in fact, one of Elizabeth's many foreign suitors coming to claim his queen. And if any of this sounded off to you, happy April Fool's Day, my friends. April Fool's goes all the way back to the Canterbury Tales. That's true. Check out englandcast.com to go deeper into the life in 16th century England with things that are actually true. Blow, northern wind, a sandful may be sweating. Blow, northern wind, blow, blow, blow. I caught a board in Bowerbreak, that's all his family is on sea.